I just want to also let you know, this is my uh, first presentation in front of a large crowd, so uh, thank you very much for being here. I'm excited myself. So, uh, I'm told, you know, a good piece of advice is if uh, you're doing a presentation in front of a big crowd, uh, you have to picture uh, your crowd in a kind of a vulnerable position, so I uh, imagine everybody wearing Nikes. <laughs> um, <coughs> <laughs> so, we have uh, two talks today. I am uh, presenting the, uh, the first uh, part, and uh, the, for me, uh, the topic of uh, presentation is how to deliver the future of shopping to millions of uh, users globally. Uh, I wanted to also thank uh, Urban sitting in the back for his continuous support uh, in uh, his great mind in uh, helping me uh, put uh, this uh, whole presentation together for, for you guys. Uh, a lot of great ideas, a lot of great thoughts uh, are presented here. Uh, I also wanted to thank uh, my development team who's here to support me and heckle me. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, Elliot, my manager, and thank you very much again as well uh, for supporting me in uh, getting this done. So, uh, the the uh, presentation I wanted to give uh, here is, uh, of course, concentrating on uh, continuous delivery, uh, but also uh, to uh, also present uh, what makes uh, the, the uh, uh, journey that um, my team and I are going through together that uh, is a very difficult task. It's a, a uh, very fun th uh, thing to do, but uh, we have to compete in, uh, a, at a global scale. We have to compete with uh, uh, very aggressive uh, competition, very aggressive brands out there. But uh, I think uh, we have uh, a lot of great things that are <coughs> uh, in the uh, space of uh, continuous delivery and uh, sharing with you some of these ideas that uh, hopefully is also very thought provoking. It is uh, something that I uh, will invite you to see. We're, we're doing a lot of great stuff here. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's a lot of fun. So, uh, just to give you a oops, uh, quick introduction to me, I'm Facundo Nishiwaki. I am a DevOps engineer here at uh, the Econ uh, team uh, for Adidas. We work on the global sites uh, for uh, Adidas, for Reebok, for uh, many of the uh, brands that we also work with uh, together uh, for uh, the sports lifestyle. Uh, I've been here as well uh, with uh, the company for almost three years, two and a half years. And, uh, uh, in this building, in this office, uh, in, in uh, the engineering team, I'm also, uh, I think, the longest taken, I believe. Uh, there's, uh, of course, a lot of other technical people uh, that have been here as well, a, a lot of uh, members of the product teams that have been here uh, longer than, than I have, but uh, I have uh, the unique situation of being uh, the engineer, the first engineer in this building, where now we are up to how many? 30, 40 or so, or, or more, and then uh, extended through as well to our externals. We have uh, close to, uh, I would say, uh, somewhere close to 100 or so. So go, going really fast, uh, as you can tell, uh, even in, in our expansion inside this building has been moving really fast. So, a quick introduction to uh, what uh, we work on on a day-to-day -day basis. We essentially work on the uh, 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 consumer journey of a uh, the user from uh, coming to our site, being a very interested, being very passionate about the uh, uh, sports products, the sports lifestyle that uh, uh, the brand is known for and uh, uh, through the development uh, and the uh, 
great new features that we are building here. We go through the consumer journey, build out the uh, different components that are very traditional that it is. You can see here, uh, uh, are very typical to any kind of e-com site from uh, the home page of where uh, most users land to uh, the CLP the category listing page, which also generates a, a lot of uh, uh, interest in, in traffic into uh, the brands and uh, into the, uh, the uh, different journeys that uh, the uh, cons our consumers are interested in. We also uh, guide them through uh, the PLP product listing page of where uh, once uh, we, uh, we can help the, the consumer uh, narrow down to uh, what kind of products they want, we can list it out for them in a uh, very visual and uh, friendly manner. Uh, then go, of course, to the PDP, the, the dis product display page, where uh, uh, is our business teams are uh, product development teams have uh, done a lot of research. The uh, users also constantly have a high demand of uh, what the, uh, they want to see in the products. And one of the interesting stories that I have here as well that I learned uh, working at Dynamics, I worked also in uh, working with some of the uh, different markets that uh, we work with globally. Uh, and you, it, it, while it sounds like very kind of a generic flow here for uh, an econ site, uh, you will see that you, different markets also have different uh, requirements and different uh, uh, journeys that tell the consumers have. In, in particular, to the PDP, uh, one story that I found very, very interesting was in Japan. In Japan, <coughs> The users uh, that go to the PDP page uh, to uh, the product display, they are actually looking for uh, the uh, uh, more of the the real feel of the product. They, in a, uh, the a Japanese uh, consumer typically wants to know: Does this match my blue jeans, or does it match my light blue jeans? And uh, uh, so they are very down into the details uh, there, while in more of the Western markets, of Western Europe, <coughs> in North America, you don't usually see that kind of uh, demand on uh, the product display page. So you can see here, this is kind of a quick introduction of what we are uh, trying uh, uh, to solve and trying to put together for uh, our consumers, is that uh, we're not simply just building uh, uh, these components of a, a website, but we are actually looking at uh, what the users uh, are, are needing and uh, developing the right features for them, uh, depending on the markets, depending on the lifestyle, depending on the users. And so for us as the development team, we constantly have to keep up. We have a lot of features that we have to uh, develop to get out there to uh, be very um, uh, uh, targeted to uh, <clears throat> the different con consumers that we have around the world uh, globally. And I'll get into more of that later as well. So really quick, you can see also uh, the adidas.nl homepage as an example. Well, you would think it's a very uh, traditional uh, static homepage. You will see that in uh, the, the .nl site, we are uh, uh, particularly focused on the Black Friday uh, early access uh, sale. Well, if we go to the same page, excuse me, in uh, uh, Germany with .de, we have a similar uh, design, but now our focus, because of how our cons uh, German consumers work, uh, are, uh, uh, um, go through our site. Uh, we have more of a uh, uh, promotion for the Creators Club, which is more of an interesting uh, feature for uh, the, the users, uh, with also uh, Cyber Weekend. So we have, with each component of our site, we have to uh, uh, develop different features. We have to focus very well. Uh, we have to uh, uh, be very, very precise in, in our uh, development in uh, uh, 
how we deliver to each different market, each different uh, uh, component of our site. So it's not simply one size fits all. And so here's also a campaign landing page that we have uh, developed. As you can see, this is uh, also a uh, brand new product for Adidas. It's uh, the Alpha Edge 4D. I don't want to really uh, promote uh, the brand or our products, but mostly I just wanted to show you we have to keep our site fresh. Uh, that's ultimately uh, what we uh, want to get at. We're saying with uh, the product listing page, uh, it's also very dynamic, where we it's not just simply uh, uh, list products based off of alphanumeric order or any uh, static type of order. We, we, uh, uh, we constantly have to uh, uh, understand how our users use our site, uh, be able to update how uh, uh, the most relevant products come up first in the product list page. Uh, so you can see, it, we, while we work with uh, the business teams, we have to uh, work with uh, their priorities where they want us with uh, uh, our, our sites uh, uh, globally on e -com, We uh, want to uh, promote uh, our hot and demand products as, as much as we can, not just uh, uh, typical uh, originals, whatever is a, uh, uh, the hot and uh, demand product at the time. We need to also, of course, keep our site fresh, as you will see also in uh, the coming shopping season. Uh, we will uh, have to constantly uh, keep the uh, consumers uh, very uh, uh, excited uh, and of course we have uh, the uh, product uh, the detail page where again uh, we have uh, a high demand also we uh, we are looking at our competitors and we're keeping uh, site performance fast we have to evaluate to it we collect a lot of metrics uh, and uh, monitor for the performance of uh, all of our different components and uh, through all of this, you can see we have to also uh, cover a lot of markets globally. There's not one market that Adidas doesn't you know, touch. We have from Asia Pacific <laughs> to Europe to North America uh, being uh, our uh, primary markets. We have emerging markets as well. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we have a lot of features that constantly change. So we have a lot of site performances that we have to deliver very quickly, uh, very fast. We have to be uh, uh, on our feet all the time. And you, we have consumers all over the world expecting us to uh, uh, be uh, fresh and be uh, 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 very good with, uh, with our uh, enemy. So I just wanted to also quickly list a, uh, all the different tools that uh, uh, we are using here at uh, Adidas, and uh, I, uh, I will be covering all of these, uh, how uh, they are integrated into um, uh, our daily work, into our pipelines, and uh, into how we optimize uh, our work, our site, uh, and uh, our development. But, See, we have quite a bit uh, from, of course, uh, all of these, if not most, are open source from Kubernetes, Grafana, Jenkins, uh, from, of course, Helm, Instana is not uh, open source, but we have a very close and direct uh, partnership with Instana. Uh, yeah, just a really quick overview of that. Um, wanted to also uh, break down really fast on how our development, uh, development teams are uh, structured. From uh, on any given day, you can see that we are developing 25 to features, 50 fake features uh, daily. Uh, anything from a, a new feature to uh, a, a site improvement to uh, a, a, a B tests uh, to anything. So we 
we are constantly uh, rolling new, uh, new features out there very, very fast. Uh, this is a count that I did yesterday, I believe it was 25 to 50 or so that we had uh, at any given moment uh, running uh, through uh, our pipelines. So we, to get that done, we need roughly uh, 100 or so developers. I don't know the exact count, but uh, I think that that's also an underestimate. Um, with uh, all of these developers, we uh, have uh, three different uh, environments that we work in. And, uh, so you can imagine all of the high traffic, all of the uh, constant changes that we have across all of our, our environments in, uh, in to be able to keep up uh, uh, with all of this, we have to have a very uh, neat and uh, well-focused uh, uh, pipelines. And, uh, uh, in general, we have to have a really good development culture. Uh, and then we have our staging environment that is also uh, part of our playground for uh, our campaign managers, our markets. Uh, it, uh, there's, that's not kind of the fun part. The fun part is more on uh, the development uh, environment. In the development uh, environment, uh, each uh, we use uh, a Git flow. We have where each uh, um, feature has its own dedicated branch. So uh, with each uh, feature, it ha it, it's a, a feature branch. It has its own dedicated pipeline uh, we, that we run in, in Jenkins. That um, uh, the, it, it, with each uh, uh, deployment into its own sub development branch or uh, sub development environment in our uh, development environment, we actually provide a full uh, function uh, uh, development uh, site uh, for each developer so that they can develop against their own uh, uh, environment and uh, they are not going uh, uh, across multiple environments breaking up. Uh, other developers code or uh, breaking a, uh, an automated test. So it, it gets very, very complex. Like I said, if we have 25 to feet, you know, 50 uh, new uh, branches built on a daily basis, and they're not all uh, completed on uh, one working day. So we sometimes even have up to 150, uh, I think actually we can up to about 200 uh, uh, concurrent uh, uh, environments and uh, uh, branches and pipelines running it all at the same time. So it, we are quite busy and we need to uh, uh, stay focused. We need to uh, uh, keep everything very well streamlined. So with um, uh, each the, uh, environment, uh, uh, each, each feature branch, we also have dedicated uh, QA automated uh, uh, tests that we run so that uh, uh, we can have our uh, pipelines running, develop against the, uh, our branches, and then QA would do a, uh, uh, a code review amongst a lot of peer uh, developers, uh, especially you know, the way that we are structured. We have uh, uh, developers who are focused primarily on uh, the uh, the pipeline flow, the automation, which is, uh, is uh, the team that I'm focused on. We have dedicated uh, teams who are also working on um, uh, the APIs, on the front end. So we have uh, a very uh, good code review process of where we want to definitely understand how each uh, uh, feature impacts uh, the rest of uh, our uh, APIs on microservices, and before we actually can do a, uh, uh, a pull request. So, how do we uh, approach uh, this uh, very unique high-scale uh, problem? We automate as much as we can. We uh, we automate like crazy, is all I can say. And we use uh, Jenkins uh, to uh, centralize uh, our um, automation, our pipelines, and 
see if I checked, I counted. Uh, uh, th and this afternoon, there were, uh, on a kind of a slow point, it was 20 pipeline jobs running. Um, and uh, we can have uh, 20, uh, around 25 concurrent uh, uh, runs uh, per pipeline uh, running uh, based off of each uh, different uh, feature branch that uh, we have. Uh, and then uh, we also have uh, a, a lot of other automation that is also triggered by uh, our automated tests, our uh, various utilities that we have to provision our environments to uh, uh, do it, uh, full integration uh, testing as well and to uh, ensure that uh, we have uh, all of our environments uh, well ready. And also part of uh, uh, our tool set, very, very important, is uh, Prometheus. For me particularly, uh, I, I enjoy monitoring. I enjoy uh, just looking at the metrics and collecting the data as much as I, I can. I, I think uh, some of my teammates can attest to that, that I uh, get a little too obsessed with us and the monitoring. But uh, it's very critical with uh, uh, with Prometheus because we collect everything from uh, how our Kubernetes uh, 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 infrastructure is running all the way from. Uh, we look at how the, the nodes are performing. We look at how our pods are running the uh, the ingresses to. Uh, uh, we even look at uh, the state of. Uh, configurations as well, so that we ensure every environment, every uh, uh, application has a uh, uh, well-configured, well-built uh, 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 environment that uh, uh, they can. And we we use Grafana uh, primarily for centralizing our alerts uh, to. Uh, route all of our, uh, our, uh, our alerts properly to uh, through chat ops, through uh, uh, we're implementing our paging system, uh, through uh, uh, calling uh, backend APIs as well to uh, try to automate and um, uh, build up it as uh, uh, robust as environment as possible. And of course, with our logging, we centralize our logging with Kibana, that then, of course, it, we use uh, Grafana to uh, uh, build out on our uh, monitoring and our alerting, uh, alerting on uh, the, uh, our uh, Kibana and the search uh, uh, logs. And Ops um, we use for uh, centrally managing all, uh, our alert channels and you know, our uh, uh, on-call rotations. I couldn't get uh, this diagram 100% um, on uh, the screen because it's way too much detail. So you can imagine this is just half of what uh, our typical day is. This is half of what we do uh, across 100 developers. Uh, so many more uh, uh, other critical uh, members of our teams from delivery leads uh, to uh, uh, analytics to uh, uh, just all, all over. And you can see, as I had pointed out, we have different components uh, of uh, our econ uh, journey from uh, the uh, PLP, PUP, so on, and uh, with each uh, microservice that we have running, we have multiple, we have, if it's all well uh, spread out, which it, we don't, it depends on what is most important uh, at uh, any given uh, day, any given season as well. Uh, we, uh, we can concentrate on adding more features to our, our cart API, and you can imagine there's so many uh, uh, feature branches that we we have to build out from cart, uh, uh, develop against, QA, uh, run through our uh, pipelines, and uh, eventually uh, merge back into 
cart, and then we get it uh, deployed over into uh, our e-com site. So uh, in here, let me see, I believe it was something like 24 um, uh, different branches, so we have really more, like 50, like I said, on any given day uh, that uh, uh, we have uh, running that my team and, uh, and I are also responsible for ensuring that uh, every single pipeline is constantly running. It is very, uh, uh, it is not blocked by any uh, issue that they have on every single uh, uh, tool that they, all of our developers are used to uh, uh, using and running against. And uh, it it's quite, gets to be quite a hectic day uh, when uh, we need to uh, look something uh, very deep in it. Not fully functioning. So, um, hopefully, that kind of gives you an idea of what uh, we'll, uh, we're up against and what we're doing. Um, so, you can see here we have the uh, we have different feature branches. Again, I could not get it all on one screen, so uh, I calculated it to be about a fifth of what we actually do on uh, any given moment. Any given moment, we have um, uh, about yeah, a, l a little more than that, because we have about 50 uh, different features in development at any time. Uh, this, uh, you can see, we teach uh, uh, feature branch, we deploy and we build an entire fully functional uh, site that like what you would expect at IBS.nl uh, where uh, the, each feature branch has its own component of uh, uh, our uh, e-com site. They can uh, develop against just a PDP, another feature, can, uh, feature branch can be build, uh, uh, developing against cart, it could Although I haven't uh, seen uh, too often or ever where one feature branch can uh, be developing against uh, two uh, different components. So, uh, we usually break that down uh, to uh, uh, one moving part uh, in each of our subsites. And so if you look at how our development environment looks like, it's like this, but easily at the very least five times uh, uh, bigger than uh, this, and it gets very, very complex. And ultimately, we merge our features back to uh, master, and uh, uh, we then continue on to uh, staging to where uh, we can have our uh, marketing teams, our uh, business teams, uh, to uh, QA and to uh, uh, prepare for their next upcoming sale. Or, uh, whatever uh, priority set uh, is up on, on uh, their plates. Um, so how uh, can we get all, all of this done? It, it takes quite a lot. Um, we have a uh, team as well that is, uh, in, we call the uh, platform engineering team. We uh, have uh, uh, different parts and, and uh, I, I checked this afternoon as well, there's actually even more, I believe there's around 10 uh, parts of the platform engineering team, and I apologize. <laughs> uh, we have uh, one of the guys uh, uh, from um, uh, uh, the team that's helping us out, that we, we have um, uh, a team structure of where we have uh, our open uh, digital platform team, uh, called OUP, where we also work with our uh, vendor called uh, Giant Swarm. And uh, primarily, uh, and perhaps this needs to be diagrammed, we have ODP, if you can imagine, at the, uh, the ground floor of uh, uh, everything that uh, we are uh, working on, that we are building. And without ODP, we are working Pretty bare, pretty, pretty naked, honestly. Uh, with uh, 
this platform, we have uh, our Kubernetes clusters that are uh, uh, covering all the different environments uh, and, and also some, uh, in all the different regions that I had also mentioned from uh, covering Western Europe, North America, uh, uh, Asia, we have also, uh, and, and you may be aware, uh, with uh, China has also very different uh, networking uh, uh, structures, so we also have uh, a separate uh, cluster for uh, China, just like every other company does, uh, I believe that's kind of a legal requirements for working in China. So without ODP, we, we would not be able to get in, into uh, all these different uh, uh, markets very quickly because with ODP, we have our Kubernetes cluster. We have uh, a, a separation of this as well of uh, our, our site with Ecom. We are uh, also able to uh, with, uh, with ODP can also build a, the architecture uh, duplicated very quickly for our analytics team. For um, uh, our, uh, uh, we have also a fast data team. We have uh, a lot of different uh, um, uh, departments within IS that uh, ODP can cater to, can build out a uh, all the infrastructure very quickly. At this point, we have it all, uh, almost all 100% automated. Where with, with you press a little button, you say that you need a Kubernetes um, uh, uh, um, cluster or multiple clusters to support market X, Y, Z with uh, uh, so much CPU power, with so much memory. Uh, we can take care of that very, very fast. And so it's a critical part, I can't mention enough. And Giant Swarm is uh, uh, a huge help to us because I, just, I, I don't know if anyone remembers, but I think it was either earlier this year or late last year, uh, Kubernetes had a very uh, serious uh, security uh, 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 issue where you could actually execute uh, uh, QCTL against a cluster without having uh, the, uh, the cert and Giant Swarm was quick. They have uh, a development team that was uh, able to uh, uh, find the issue and they were the ones that also uh, created the uh, pull request to uh, Kubernetes to, uh, to patch this issue. So. Um, if we don't have ODP, we don't have uh, Giant Swarm. Uh, we cannot build uh, a very fast, very secure uh, in, uh, uh, environment for uh, e-com, mobile, everything else. Uh, we have also a uh, lean uh, delivery team, which uh, we also are able to uh, quickly th uh, uh, organizationally share and build, to build and share uh, Jenkins libraries, uh, uh, build out uh, repeatable uh, pipelines that may be targeted to uh, our, um, uh, let's say our fast data team. And for us at Ecom, we say, well, we want uh, the same thing. We, we're actually building this, uh, the same kind of uh, architecture uh, and we can easily cross organization, uh, uh, build all of this and uh, share it uh, across multiple teams uh, thanks to uh, uh, how the lean delivery team is structured. And then of course with our technical monitoring, we have a, a full suite of uh, monitoring uh, stacks to uh, review and see how uh, our uh, site performance is working and uh, a dedicated team that is uh, working 24-7. Uh, with us on all different parts of our, our sites and uh, our, uh, uh, again, our mobile and everything else. Um, so uh, with uh, those teams, we call the uh, platform engineering uh, team that is uh, uh, kind, of, kind of our ground floor to, uh, to get us uh, uh, running. Uh, 
uh, very smooth now. And uh, with, uh, with uh, platform engineering, we can build to scale, we can monitor and uh, identify all of the metrics that we need to uh, uh, get to the scale, the scales that we need, the numbers that we need. Uh, we can be agile. And then, of course, as we are building all of this together, there's really, you know, what are we actually trying to do? What are we really trying to solve? And ultimately, it's the same problem that every other uh, retail and uh, uh, consumer product uh, business is trying to do. We're trying to uh, get to uh, have successful Black Fridays. And like I said, I've, I, I joined the company just before Black Friday 2017. So there's a lot of, of uh, evolution, a lot of things that I, uh, I saw in uh, that uh, uh, I see change because of how we are as a structure, uh, very uh, uh, real big and, uh, enterprise company that is serious about uh, getting uh, agility, getting uh, uh, developing microservices and uh, uh, getting our uh, products out there very fast. And so I, with Black Friday 2017, I, what we saw was that the site, uh, adidas.com, globally, uh, we functioned, but it was kind of a, honestly, a pain. It was, uh, to date, it was the biggest 24-hour uh, period that uh, the company had ever seen. So, uh, uh, you know, we saw, uh, I don't have numbers and I actually don't know if business will let me share numbers of how much we did in sales, but uh, uh, functionally, we got the site up and running. We were uh, 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 doing quite well. However, we, as we got orders in, we experienced a little bit of a slowness in actually getting uh, to uh, completing the order, we we we, we uh, uh, processed all the orders. We uh, delivered all of the orders. However, I don't think we were quite happy enough with uh, how uh, 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 we had the skill. We wanted to do better. We we knew we could do better. Uh, we did not lose a single order. I, I don't think. We've lost a single sale in that day, and I think for that we are proud, but we knew if we were going to be growing, which was, at the time, we were uh, anticipating a huge, huge growth. We could not uh, keep up with the velocity that we, we had, and uh, uh, with the different teams from the platform engineering team, with how we work uh, here with uh, the development team, we knew that we had to, uh, uh, take a look at what had happened, how do we uh, transform it so that we are more uh, uh, more agile, faster in getting our uh, uh, features out there, getting our site even faster, getting the products out there faster to our consumers. Uh, so uh, we, we took the time and we, uh, after the, the shopping season ended in uh, 2017 and 2018, we had uh, postmortems all of the time. Not necessarily because of outages. That is uh, not uh, how we would define postmortem, but rather to talk about uh, if we want to continuously grow as a business uh, and they, uh, be able to deliver on to millions and millions of users on a uh, daily basis, what are the things that we can uh, uh, improve on uh, and deliver even uh, more of the features that we want to get out there. As I had mentioned, there's lots of features on a daily basis that we want to get out there. There's lots of very hungry uh, consumers that we have. So uh, the postmortems were about we, we succeeded in 2017, but how do we automate it? How do we uh, 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 make our site even uh, uh, leaner and uh, uh, a uh, better and smoother experience. So, um, one of the, our lessons that we learned, we need 
to work with our business teams and we need to uh, understand uh, better. Uh, we have some forecasts. We, we have lots and lots of data. It's incredible the amount of data that we have. Uh, and we collect terabytes and terabytes of data on a daily basis. So we need to, we need to understand how, uh, uh, how do we optimize our features, our components of our site, how do we uh, uh, finish the consumer journey uh, end to end on our site. So for uh, uh, 2018, we prepared for Black Friday 2018, and we took the lessons that we learned from 2017, and uh, uh, we, we built out the, the features that we knew were critical uh, at, uh, for, uh, for shopping. And we uh, prioritized them uh, properly. We got them through uh, uh, the pipelines and uh, the whole process as I had uh, explained and got them out there very, very fast. Um, and the, we saw a huge, huge difference. In 2017, uh, it took quite a bit of uh, manual intervention to uh, uh, get uh, things that you know, uh, we, we needed to get done automated. Um, we scaled, but we didn't scale fast enough. And we had to uh, ensure, uh, in order to prevent a, a kind of, any kind of outage, that we, uh, uh, we were ahead of that. So uh, we built dashboards everywhere to understand how uh, we uh, uh, can anticipate uh, uh, our site performance, our uh, uh, traffic flow uh, on a day-to-day basis, uh, how, how to understand how our consumers also react to our sales. So uh, we uh, really concentrated on uh, optimizing uh, our features. And ultimately, again, we had another very successful 2018. It was the uh, best uh, 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 day 24 hour period since Black Friday 2017. And um, for this year, Black Friday is what, two weeks from now, I believe. So we've been working like crazy for the last two or three months preparing for uh, particularly one, our one big day but for the whole shopping season all the way through the end of uh, December. So how do we do that? that uh, how do we learn from 2017 that we, we were able to do into, into 2018? Uh, we uh, took our learnings from 2018. We uh, applied it to uh, all of our automation, uh, at least as much, as much as we could. We automated our, our pipelines from, uh, and even more to uh, really prioritize, get get our site performances uh, uh, out there to get QA uh, uh, front and center to uh, uh, how we get our code uh, uh, delivered out there. And uh, we still have a bit of, uh, more work to do, but one of the, the key things uh, for us was load testing, um, Compared to 2018, load testing that we did for uh, this season has been a, an exponential improvement. In 2018, uh, when we were part of uh, the load testing, it was very, very hard to coordinate because one thing that I haven't described about our site, we also have uh, a lot of uh, downstream third-party dependencies, which is also uh, why it, it, some of our features are very hard to uh, develop against and to, to, uh, to deploy. There, uh, the, some of the issues that we have are, uh, we have third parties that uh, are not always ready, uh, or do not scale to the scale of what Adidas demands. So uh, we needed to, uh, in 2018, we had uh, problems where we needed to uh, coordinate with them, uh, uh, talk to uh, our uh, account managers, let them know 
and we needed to uh, load test uh, to be prepared for the shopping season. Sometimes it was uh, uh, a schedule that you have to uh, go by two weeks, three weeks ahead of time. And if uh, your load tests fail, then you have to schedule another run two or three weeks after that. So uh, it, it was a, a very slow pace in 2018. 2019, uh, we worked very, uh, uh, very hard and very fast on that. And uh, we, we prepared uh, uh, much, much better. We got uh, our uh, testing flow uh, for much better automated through our pipelines so that we have our features out there developed. We can then uh, run our uh, automation in our pipelines for uh, 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 run load tests very, very fast. Uh, so in, uh, what was it, maybe a couple of weeks ago or so, it, for us, will used to take us you know, days and weeks. It would take us 30 minutes or less just to set up the environment to uh, uh, have a full stack of everything from uh, all our components, our, uh, a load testing uh, uh, environment in site, work with our uh, uh, third party dependencies, and then execute uh, our load tests and uh, uh, get successful results within 30 minutes. So that, for us, that, that was a huge, huge improvement uh, because we were able to uh, concentrate on the uh, automation and the pipelines for uh, all the things we needed to get done for Black Friday 2019. So the strategies that uh, we built out for uh, getting uh, this done, uh, uh, we, we've reviewed and um, we're constantly con uh, updating and uh, uh, working with the uh, resource definitions. And of course, with each uh, new feature that we deploy, we have also different uh, uh, performance, different constraints, so we constantly have to uh, uh, test and, and uh, adjust uh, accordingly. Um, uh, we've also implemented uh, some uh, uh, validations to our uh, uh, deployments so that we can also ensure that we are uh, using our resources and our Kubernetes uh, cluster wisely. Uh, I can't uh, stress enough about also how much uh, monitoring we have in place. I don't think we uh, are anywhere near done because we all are always so curious. We have to monitor everything. We have to monitor everything from our infrastructure in Kubernetes, uh, our, how our nodes are functioning, how our pods are functioning. Um, uh, we have to also uh, understand uh, our, how our applications uh, are functioning. Uh, we uh, look at uh, everything from uh, our HTTP status codes, their, uh, 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 their performance, their uh, latencies, uh, uh, how, what kind of uh, request counts we have, and, and and also compare it to how uh, our business metrics are performing. We have our forecast, we know what we need to uh, do on a per day, per minute, uh, per second basis, but we also need to match up how our uh, uh, pods match up to what our uh, uh, forecasts are and how our actually uh, uh, true uh, uh, bottom line is working. So we, uh, we have Lots and lots of uh, monitoring, and uh, we really try to get uh, very deep into uh, all of our metrics. Uh, and again, performance tests, we, we need to do a lot and lots and lots of uh, uh, load tests. Uh, we, we've gotten much, much better working with uh, our third party uh, downstream dependencies. You know, to uh, look at how uh, we uh, perform against them and ensure uh, how uh, we do. Um, so occasionally we do have uh, some, uh, uh, some spikes or some uh, not so typical days. 
and in a, in a good way, not so typical. Uh, primarily, we have um, uh, some days of where we have uh, our, uh, easy launches. We have uh, a, um, uh, some uh, very uh, high demand products at the end of days. Uh, we have some more products that. that go beyond our forecast. There's hardly any way that uh, we can actually uh, 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 know what we are, are to expect. It, it's incredible be because uh, for a easy product, we can sell out uh, within seconds, within minutes, within an hour, uh, within days. We, it don't, we don't know. We know we're gonna sell out, we just don't know when. And how fast we do that, uh, it, we don't know, but however, we always have to handle our uh, traffic. So uh, uh, we also have to be uh, on the lookout for bots. Uh, we, um, uh, in a long time back, we've of course locked down our uh, uh, endpoints so that uh, we uh, prevent any kind of malicious uh, attacks. So, so uh, uh, particularly with ODP, with uh, Giant Swarm, we are able to really get into uh, where the uh, bot attacks are happening and, and prevent them uh, whenever possible uh, and uh, uh, mitigate them as best as possible. But for us, I think one of our biggest uh, factors is using uh, uh, Akamai bot protection. Uh, recognized bot manager, uh, which is on a bot protection that uh, uses uh, machine learning to understand the behavior of bots to uh, uh, get us uh, uh, ahead of the game whenever uh, we see uh, any, any kind of uh, concerns there. Um, so uh, we still have a lot of work to do. And we need we need to uh, handle uh, better some of the uh, spikes, the uh, unexpected, um, uh, or the traffic that we really cannot uh, forecast for. So we have uh, our development team. We are working in also integrating uh, Circuit Breaker with uh, Console with uh, Learn Manager. Uh, and, and uh, being able to uh, detect downstream uh, issues or outages and redirect uh, to uh, a healthy uh, uh, node or healthy uh, source. Uh, sometimes we, have, we can do that cross-regionally if we have to uh, cross-market. It uh, depends on uh, what uh, uh, we see uh, with our uh, circuit breaker. We're also uh, looking into uh, Kong, and uh, we uh, primarily are fascinated by the uh, uh, features that the, uh, the Kong provides with uh, rate limiting and uh, with ACL, so access control lists, so that uh, uh, we can uh, ensure that uh, our backends are run smoothly, that uh, we can uh, keep going with uh, the demands that we have uh, across the, uh, the world, globally, per market, and even uh, per de uh, demand on uh, a uh, specific product. So we still have a lot to do in addition to building uh, cool new features. Uh, so we... Uh, uh, we have to get uh, a lot of things done, and uh, through uh, we also have a uh, a portal on uh, GitHub um, with Adidas.github.io. Uh, it is a portal that uh, uh, our platform engineering team has uh, uh, built and maintained. Uh, that is uh, open sources uh, a lot of code that is relevant for the community. Of course, we did not open source ours in 
entire site, so do not expect our site code or our app code on there. Uh, but uh, uh, it's for us, open source is, is an important thing. And uh, you can, if you go to our portal, you can actually see also some of the projects that we are working on with, uh, uh, within the Jenkins community uh, with building um, uh, cool new tools. Uh, with an automation, uh, with um, uh, JavaScript, uh, with front ends. So uh, there's definitely a lot more. If you want to get down into more of the uh, technical understanding of our code, of what uh, uh, we are so interested in as a team, uh, I just thought GitHub IO is uh, a good uh, start for you. Um, again, I am Fakundo Nishiwaki. Uh, um, I don't have a good closing statement, but I wanted to give you a uh, an overview. Is that uh, you know we have uh, a, a lot of uh, big work that we've done. We, we have so much more ahead of us. Uh, I think it's important for us to also get back to uh, the community. Um, to uh, give you an understanding that you know, a, we're not just a uh, sports company. We have, I think we have a lot of fun building uh, our uh, e-com sites and mobile sites and mobile apps and uh, there's a, a lot more out there. But hopefully this is interesting for you that you've learned a little bit or something and you've been curious um, and uh, yeah, giving you also the uh, give, get up uh, for it. I'll leave it to questions if you have any. Uh, thank you, Mr. Professor. Uh, this is a uh, very good insight. And uh, congratulations on all the good work done to you and your team. Thank you. So when it comes to environment, so your development environment is a replica of production in terms of configuration data schema, or there were still some delta which you would manage before moving forward into Component by component, well, the, sorry, the question being, since you uh, give me my microphone, the question being, with uh, the environment, uh, the uh, development environment, uh, how different it, uh, is, is the configuration uh, from one uh, environment to the next, I assume, from development to staging to production. Um, it is very much one-to-one. -one. Configuration, like, you know, we, is particularly private keys or, uh, uh, th things like that. Of course, it's going to be slightly different. Though, with the development environment, uh, the all of the uh, development environments that I described, where you know we have a one uh, very enormous development shared cluster, uh, where we we have x number fifty or so, twenty five to fifty uh, different sub environments in development. They uh, share the same dependencies downstream because that's the one thing that we cannot yep. replicate so quickly. Uh, particularly in, in some cases, it, so for downstream, uh, we, you have to either do manual configuration or you're, you're stuck with paying an extra license just for uh, uh, creating uh, an, an extra dependency on that. So uh, they, in that case, each of the, the development environments, they share the same uh, dependencies. Yeah, I think that was the yeah. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, first of all, I think, uh, you know, congratulations for completing your first session, as you said. So, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> couple of questions that I had was, you talked about uh, business matrices and order management system uh, that you track during your uh, sales seasons. Uh, would you also be able to share what kind of matrices or indicators do you usually track to ensure that you have order fulfilled is, you know, mapping back to your order? So that's also something. Let me see if I can rephrase your question. Uh, what kind of business metrics we collect and we monitor for? Uh, uh, what kind of indicators would you use for your order? Uh, you know, uh, what kind of matching your order placement is equal to your order fulfillment on your sales agents. Is that something that you do on real time? Uh, well, thanks actually to uh, uh, my product owner who's kind of dug I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> uh, this is actually something we tackled very, very recently. Um, 
Um, one of my own personal initiatives was to uh, um, get into the uh, business metrics and to understanding how does the performance of our site correlate to how the business back end works? How, how does it translate into orders? Um, uh, how does it in, uh, translate into the, our bottom line? And uh, we've had uh, that uh, running for a while, but now we also uh, uh, get very deep into uh, everything from uh, we also have uh, now an analytics team who does, of course, uh, after the fact, not in not in real time, uh, but that collects analytics and understands how uh, our users work. But in real time, we now look at how uh, how uh, we translate orders in, uh, down to I believe per per minute, which is an incredible feat compared to. Uh, uh, I think what is out there right now where sometimes you do not get uh, um, uh, some order management systems where you, 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 you do not get in, uh, in such high real time. So we're now looking at uh, conversion rates of uh, orders. We're looking at uh, payment instruments, which is also very key, especially when we have uh, 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 relationships with uh, 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 payment systems that uh, are working with, uh, with our business. And we, so we, now we look at how, uh, uh, how many orders per uh, payment instrument, instrument are, are happening, being PayPal, the uh, Visa, the MasterCard, uh, and so on. And we also uh, look at uh, it, um, uh, uh, even uh, the performance of our, uh, we, we, as I had also pointed out, in one of our components, we are uh, um, very well focused on our cart. So we look at, uh, uh, from our cart performance, we, uh, we uh, uh, look at how fast our cart go, uh, is um, uh, uh, performing well with our consumers. Uh, how uh, we can, how quickly we can also process payments, um, and uh, through so, uh, so uh, some of uh, the uh, uh, changes that we have, some of the new features we've actually uh, seen uh, something like a two x increase of uh, uh, order conversions um, uh, because we were able to really uh, lock down into all the, the different metrics that we have. So not just uh, how well we uh, convert to, uh, how well we process orders, what kind of payment instruments, uh, ship methods. Um, uh, we look at also how, uh, if and when uh, users are, leave the cart and don't complete the order. Uh, and so uh, uh, with all of these, uh, metrics we are able to really, really improve uh, you know, some uh, our current uh, performance and features. Right. Does that help <laughs> answer your question? Yeah, but yes. Partly yes. Uh, I believe uh, uh, I was also looking for, uh, so you talked about order uh, cart abandonment and looking how you can convert your cart abandonment to real orders. I was also looking for how you are tracking your order place to your order fulfillment. You mean the jeopardy management, order jeopardy management? The warehouse. Uh, yeah. uh, That's yeah. beyond our site. So, uh, we primarily are focused on how our site works with uh, our order management system, which is a, uh, uh, an, a third party that we work with. Okay. Yeah, I think that will happen in the order management side of the journey, once you queue in the order. Absolutely. Second so one. once you have the order placed, that's when you start the right? One last question, sorry. Um, I was curious, how does your automated test landscape look like? What sorts of tests are you running? And I'm referring just to like automated one test. Um, yeah. Coming from a former QA background, I wish I could answer this question much better. I, I, I've become so much 
more fascinated with uh, the overall landscape of uh, operations of the entire uh, application landscape. That I I don't know how to answer your question at this point. I I I can tell you yeah, it's very important, uh, and I cannot stress enough. And I, uh, QA is very important to us. We have uh, a a, um, a lot of. Uh, hooks into uh, our automated testing, where we do also do, do uh, integration testing. We uh, have um, uh, our a uh, API testing, and also we have a black box testing. To what extent and uh, to uh, what features? I, I don't have those exact uh, details. Apologize. I think that's it for me. I have run out of time. So thank you very much. Uh, Thank you.